So, so what? This is a little exhibitor, and it was brought in last night, found in a driveway of a farm. It was, it was certainly behaving abnormally. Color's pretty good. A little bit. So we're looking at the color, the color of its inside its mouth. Typically, if it's really pale, it's anemic. Dehydrated. And dehydrated. Yeah. And there are no strands of. Looks pretty good. There are no strands of saliva either, which is another indication. Sticky saliva also means it's dehydrated. Um, the eyes look like they're really equal. Um, they're not dilating quickly. It could be sometimes. I immediately think of a toxin for some of these animals, um, especially if someone's been putting out um, bird pesticide uh, like Avatrol or something to kill pigeons and starlings and sparrows in barns. These guys can, these are, exhibitors are primarily bird eaters. That's their, birds are their preferred prey. Um, and so if there's a sick bird around it will be an opportunistic hunter and take that um, sick bird and if it's got toxins in in it this bird then will end up ingesting the toxin and they can often they will probably die too if not um, getting medical treatment so we always look for different things the way it's holding its wings when it's standing the wings have been held equally symmetrically there have not been if we palpate the bones of this beautiful bird to see if we find any fractures or any swelling, there is nothing that seems obvious. Sometimes a fracture can be certainly where we aren't palpating, like maybe in the uh, what we call the collarbone and that would have to be picked up with x-rays. But the wings seem to be in good shape. Switch spots. And I may have lost the feet. I did. You have a wing. You want the feet? I kind of got them tucked. So okay. Probably all right. So we feel the other wing. I don't feel anything there either, so we'll tuck that one carefully back in. Okay, um, so the eyes look good, the uh, mouth looks good. Um, there is one spot in the mouth that I'll have a veterinarian take a look at. It, sometimes it might be parasites. The bird, when we feel the, the keel or the breastbone, it's, real. it's really prominent which means it does not have um, muscle tissues built up on either side of it. You want them pretty plump when they're coming in. So this means that when you can feel a prominent um, keel or breastbone, you it's know that it's starving. Um, so, and the other way is looking at the tail of this exhibitor. They have long tails. They're amazing flyers, long pointed wings, long tails. But the ends of this the end of the tail feathers are a little bit frayed. They're wet because he took a bath, Ouch, which is good. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's one that's been broken, so he's been on the ground for a little while. But otherwise, he's not in bad shape. Really good shape. So we have great hopes for him. Um, and let's look at his feet while they're presenting themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and their feet. You can see why they're really good at snatching birds, little hooks, little fish hooks, yep. or bird hooks. Yeah, so um, they don't have any sores on them, which also tells me he's not been down on the ground for a long time. They look pretty good, no fractures or anything. Um, yeah, so three toes forward and one back. This is called the halix, and, and that's really an important um, part of his bird capturing equipment. So we want to make sure that all of these are functional and they look good. So that's good. Now as far as his legs go, he's been standing on his legs. 
There are no... It's got real good strength. It's got good strength, good reactions now, as opposed to last night. So, I'll give you the feet in. Okay. And by the way, Bruce, my husband, is a, a bird biologist who works for the Department of Natural Resources here in Iowa. Um, I think we're going to see if we can feed it at this point. Sure. And then, now we've done the cursory exam. Again. Sure. And we're going to try and feed it. And I've got two different things here. We've got some carnivore critical care emergency uh, solution that I gave it last night. And it's got lots of amino acids and, and a full nutritional package. Um, I'll see if it'll take a little bit of that. And then we're going to see if it'll take some mice. So another thing that I can point out right now is that the birds around here have already figured out that there's a predator nearby. The cardinals are going a little bit crazy. Blue jay's been going, sounding off. They're a little bit worried about themselves, especially the cardinal. Although a cardinal would be pretty big prey for a sharp for, for at least for the male. bird is behaving a whole lot better than last night. Yeah, it's, it's fighting from time to time. It's but good. we don't want to release it until we can build some weight back up. If he was in really critical condition and not able to take things, um, take this orally as simply as this, we would actually do something called tubing, which is to take a long flexible tube and actually stick it all the way down into his stomach, um, attached to the syringe, and then just push it in. And, um, and that way he wouldn't have to focus on swallowing. But he's in good enough shape that he can, he can swallow fine. So now we're going to give him um, some, excuse me a minute. Thank you. They got left on another table. Now we're going to see if it'll take them. Um, even though it's primarily a bird predator, they will be opportunistic and take small rodents as well. Here in town, they would take... Um, a big chunk. Yeah, it is a big chunk. Let me see if I can get a little one. They would take... Um, things like chipmunks. These guys might take something more appropriately sized rather than a chipmunk. Probably a mouse. Probably a mouse, just like what we're feeding it. And we'll see if that's going to be. Nope. nope. <laughs> Never fear. Not ready for that yet. I'm going to go get scissors. I'll be back. All right, so now we're going to feed this um, bird. We've already given it some of the Emeraid uh, Carnivore Critical Care. Um, blended diet and now we're going to see if it will take some mice which is not necessarily its preferred thing it would rather have um, birds but we have mice on hand so that's what we're going to give it and it will take birds it will take rodents in the wild as well oh good job Bruce you want to talk a little bit about how we know it's a sharp shinned hawk and a little bit about sharp shinned hawks Okay, so there, there are two exhibitors that nest in Iowa. Uh, the Cooper's Hawk is by far the most common one. That's a size bigger than this, but otherwise they look very, very similar. It has a very long tail that it uses as a rudder. It's a forest bird. And it has uh, great little sharp talons. That is, it, it catches birds on, in flight. It's, it's really good at catching birds in flight. Uh, the way I know that, so I'm, I, by the characteristics of the, the color of the eyes, the color of the, the breast feathers, the size of the bird. So it, it's a, almost certainly a second year sharp chinned hawk male. The female would be about a third again larger, but otherwise would look almost exactly the same. Basically just a smaller size, or this is a smaller size. What so, about the coloration of the eyes? So by next year, when it's it'll be basically a breeding adult male next year, potentially, and it will have reddish eyes instead of orange eyes. Uh, the breast feathers will be a lot more rusty colored, a lot more 
a lot more color than you see right now. Uh, the back plumage should darken up and become a slate gray instead of kind of a brownish gray. The only recent nest I know of sharps and hawks was in Stevens Forest in Lucas County. In southern Iowa. In, yeah, extreme southern Iowa. But we don't really document it nesting in Iowa a great deal. It typically likes to nest in pine trees. Builds a little stick nest. Now, we, we've seen a lot, a big increase it seems like, of Cooper's hawk, its relative, um, the bigger bird you were talking about. Um, slightly larger exhibitor in urban areas. Can you talk about that a little bit and, and what the difference is perhaps and why we're not seeing that with sharp shin hawks? I'm not sure I can tell why we're not seeing that with sharp shin hawks, but one thing that Cooper's, Cooper's hawk used to be a state threatened species back in the 1980s, maybe into the early 1990s. It was pretty much strictly a rural bird, a bird you'd find out in the bigger forests of the state. And sometime in the probably late 80s, early 90s, Cooper's Hawk started to learn how to adapt to humans. They started nesting in towns and cities. I think Dubuque, Iowa was the first place they showed up in Iowa. And anyway, they, they're they very good at uh, catching birds around bird feeders. So sharp shinned hawk and Cooper's Hawk, if people are complaining about raptors eating their birds around the feeder, it's almost certainly going to be one of these two. And the Cooper's Hawk is probably at at least during the summertime is a hundred times more common than a sharp shinned hawk. During the winter time you can see either one, they, they both winter here. But I'm almost surprised that a cooper's hawk hasn't come over while we've been doing this. Check it out. I suppose if it vocalized then it would bring in something it else. Could. But we, but we do have Cooper's hawks nesting in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. pretty close. Oh, a little liquid probably would help. And I'm not, and I want to make sure people understand that I'm not strangling the bird. I'm just trying to control the head a little bit. So I've got two fingers, one on either side of the neck, and then I pull the beak open. So, so this bird is way mellow. Uh, sharp exhibitors in general, sharp chin hawks and Cooper's hawks, are fairly aggressive when you handle them. And they don't typically. do well in captivity because they stress out so easily. They're very high strung. Mm -hmm. So we want to get this bird back on its feet, weight up, and release it as quickly as possible. That's typically the goal with any wild animal that we get in, but particularly with these animals that that uh, are a lot more high strung. So, so it's obvious to us, at least, that this bird is not in great shape. Otherwise, it wouldn't be tolerating us as well. It'd probably be trying to bite. It'd be trying to grab us with its talons. It would be fighting us a lot more. I think that's a little big for it, and it can't tear it apart. So I don't want to. You know, normally, when it feeds on its own, it would grab the piece of meat, or let's say mouse, and, and tear it apart, holding it with its feet and grabbing with the beak. So it's like the feet are the fork and the beak is the knife that tears it away. And then it just can take the size pieces that it wants. But we've just got to be careful not to overdo it here. The shape of the piece makes a difference too. If it's long it can get it down pretty easily as well as small we just don't want it long and skinny works long well. and skinny works pretty good mm, tasty. and i think that that's probably all we're going to give it right now okay. i'm but i am going to i've got a wet cloth here and i'm going to wipe up any food remaining on its beak, whether it was the any viscera, blood, or anything from the mouse, or the any of the sticky fluid from the um, emergency blended diet that I gave it. So we want to keep their feathers in really good shape. 
He is well enough, as I mentioned earlier, to take a bath on his own, but but we don't want to okay. risk. Are you ready to weigh him? Yes. So we've already weighed the bucket ahead of time. We know what it weighs. I'm going to put the bird in. Okay. We'll weigh the bucket with the bird, then we'll subtract the weight of the bucket. One o two, one thousand twenty five grams. And that's, um, we'll find out the norms for sharp shinned hawks in a bit. Um, but, but that's what we're going to do right now for our exam and feeding. And uh, we hope that you've enjoyed um, watching what we do here at the Iowa Wildlife Center here in central Iowa. Do not stress the birds so much. I think we'll take them directly from the bucket into the bin. That's what I was thinking. Okay.